The greatest pleasure of animal watching still comes from observing free living creatures in their natural habitat. With a number of countries to explore, you can go to Brazil, India, South America or Antarctica on animal watching trips or bag a view of the African Big Five, even go down under to explore the sea creatures. The bond between humans and animals can simply be defined as love with no judgement. Either as a pet owner, a veterinary physician, a wildlife chaser or the Hinduism religion of the Indian people. There is something psychological that draws us to wildlife. In this episode, we explore the oldest living creature in the universe and its unique relationship with humans. There was a time when honeybees were once thought heavenly messengers, an expression of the wisdom in the universe, a spark of cosmic consciousness and a gift to the world. Honeybees have been in existence for over 100 million years. They live in large groups called colonies. Each colony can hold 10,000 to 60,000 bees. A special partnership grew between bees and humans. We visited beekeeper Paul Snooks at the Old North Stables in Worcester for his viewpoint on these extraordinary creatures. Hi, uh, welcome to the Old North Stables. Uh, this is where uh, we keep our bees uh, and it's one of the highlights of the Old North Stables which is a community garden and people love to see our bees and they love even more trying our honey. Walk this way. I decided to become a beekeeper because I, I uh, uh, kept hearing about the way bee numbers were declining, uh, colony collapse and they were under a lot of stress and uh, I heard also that they do very well in an urban environment. They do better in many ways in an urban environment than they do in the countryside because there's a, a much wider variety of forage for them of different types of plants uh, within cities. And also um, there's not so much spray. Uh, in the countryside it's monoculture and lots of uh, insecticides, so they're under tremendous stress. So I did it because I wanted to help uh, bee numbers and that benefits us human beings because without bees, without pollinators, we would literally starve to death. We are here because uh, there is a feral colony that has made a, a hive uh, under a hive uh, with honeycomb um, and uh, we're going to have a look at that in a moment and uh, we're going to be taking that that high the, the, those honeycomb off with the bees and taking them and putting them in a proper hive there's three uh, types of bees there's the queen bee there's the worker bees and there's the drones and the the, the, the queen obviously is a female and the workers are females uh, but they don't lay eggs generally uh, and then there's the the drone which are the males and their job is to uh, fertilize the queens It's quite complex um, taking care of them and thinking about your neighbours and, and how to cite them and how to take care of them and then it's absolutely fascinating uh, the way they work together and learning um, uh, both th theoretically and also practically um, the complex life and the way the Queen communicates and the way they communicate with each other. It, it's just fascinating. It's really, really interesting. So uh, when you're going to be processing honey, it's very important that everything's clean. So I'm boiling some water here. Uh, we're going to put the honey jars in those to, to sterilize them. And we've wiped all the equipment uh, and made sure it's all absolutely spotless and we're ready to roll. What we're going to be doing now is getting these um, frames of honey with the honeycomb on them uh, out of the, the super, which is the chamber where the uh, worker bees have stored the honey in honeycomb. Right, so what we've got here is 
uh, this cloth uh, wrapped around these frames of honeycomb. I did that uh, to put these, uh, put it in a plastic bag so that it wouldn't drip in the car. Took this from a hive yesterday um, out in Lemster, and uh, we covered it with this cloth because there were some bees uh, here. We, when we took this off just a moment ago, there were a few stragglers. Um, flying around uh, and we didn't want those dry flying around when we when I was driving home in the car yesterday so that's quite a standard thing to do is to cover it with a cloth what we're going to do with these now is we're going to take these out uh, we're going to cut off the wax and we're going to put them in a spinner spin them and get all the lovely yummy honey out of them It's the next day and we have uh, got the honey here separated uh, in the separating barrel. Uh, the honey has separated from the wax and the wax has come to the top of the honey and we've now got, uh, we're ready to pour the honey uh, out of this separating chamber through this sieve into this jar, into this receptacle and we're going to then uh, pour the honey into jars. This is the final stage, putting the honey into the jar. Liquid gold. Isn't that oh, wonderful? You can see the air bubbles in there. Those will rise to the sur surface and will disappear quite quickly. There we are. One jar of honey, actually, put a drop more in. We go. There you go. One jar of unprocessed raw natural honey, the best that you could wish for. Um, I watched a video of uh, the industrial uh, way that bees are cared for in America um, and they truck them all over the country and they've got forklift trucks and they spray them and use all sorts of chemicals. We try to avoid using chemicals uh, on, uh, uh, on our uh, bees. The, 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 there's uh, a ban at the moment in the EU but not in America. They're ju just this spray that's killing huge amounts of bees. Uh, they, uh, all the honey, all the honey is stripped out, of, uh, taken off the bees. They're given sugar syrup, just your common uh, uh, sh a sugar bag mixed with water, and that's what's fed to them. We don't do that. Uh, we feed, we leave enough honey for them to uh, survive. That's their natural food, you know. So we we leave enough honey for them to feed on over the winter. There's nothing for them to feed on now. Um, out of the hive, so they've stored honey in there. But as I said, a lot of beekeepers, and especially in America, the commercial beekeepers, every last bit of honey's gone, and they feed them sugar water. They they're sprayed with all these chemicals, and and you know, guess what? You know, we're having this colony collapse. Well, a, a, as you can see here, one of the things uh, the. the this is on a, in a community garden and uh, we are hoping that more people will become interested uh, in beekeeping and we've, we've actually had uh, a lot of people express an interest. We're going to start teaching people, giving people introductory courses, uh, so we, we, we're, we're, we take up beekeeping. It's a fascinating hobby, it's, it's just, I just love to sit 
the chair here on a summer's day and just watch the bees coming in and out it's just it's a very soothing very ah, just really deeply satisfying experience so take up beekeeping Einstein wrote if the bee disappears from the surface of the earth man would have no more than four years to live. No more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more man.